Chris, are you ready to fire away? Come on. The NFL schedule release was last night. Uh, first off, I wanted to get your opinion on this. If you are the NFL, would you be super pissed off at ESPN, who is about to have a three-hour special on the NFL, five minutes, ten minutes before their show, Sports Center is already detailing the breaking news of what week some of the biggest games are going to be played. They're talking about week three with the Chiefs and the Ravens, and uh, first Sunday is going to be Brady against Breeze, and blah, blah. They're talking about all this on SportsCenter right before the show. Would you be pissed if you're the NFL? Well, no, because ESPN had the rights to, to the show to begin with. All they did was just hurt their own show. I mean, it made no sense. But it ESPN's just, hurt. How did it hurt the NFL? The NFL doesn't care. No, no, it's the, the NFL wanted a because the big, NFL let their teams share it out immediately. Yeah, I mean, some of them shared it out right at seven. They were supposed to share it at seven thirty. It, no, it was just I, a, no, I, I'll tell you this: a cluster. the Browns, the the teams that I follow on social media were the Bucks, the Browns, the Patriots, the Saints, and the Titans. All shared it out at the exact same time. Now, all at seven o'clock, seven o five, seven whatever. Which is but it was crazy. it was right at the beginning. Every one of them. So I'm sure that all of them did. I don't know yeah. that any of them held back. No, I think you may be right. You may be right. They, I mean, there was a big press release. All ESPN did was hurt. They cut their own knees out from under them by doing that. Yes, because you would have had if, everybody tuned in at seven o'clock to watch what was going on week by week. If and, if I was on the show doing the NFL show, I would have been pissed at the Sports Center guys. Oh yeah, I've been real pissed. Oh, a hundred percent. It was that, just that's one strange. of those where I'm calling, I'm calling my boss and saying, "Hey, what the hell are we doing?" Yeah, they cut our knees out from under. That is an inner ESPN thing. That's not a the NFL didn't get hurt by that. Yeah, no, they, that, maybe show. you're right. Maybe you're right. It was it it, it seems stupid uh, to me to see that because I had turned it on ten minutes before and just to have the TV on because I was chasing yeah. the boy around and I noticed ten minutes before the show that they are already like going through the biggest games and it's like those yeah. are the ones that we're waiting to see. That's like, right. I don't know. It's so dumb. Matt jumps in. He said, I hate when somebody, or I hate when shows drag out some announcement like LeBron's announcement. Just drop it all at once so I can say awesome and then turn the TV off. That's the thing, though, brother. They don't want you to turn the TV off. <laughs> well, that's, they're, they're, they're struggling for content right now. Yeah. They have the day and time where they wouldn't have done a three-hour show, but today they're, they're just struggling for content. Yeah, they are, they are pushing for all of this stuff. So, with that said, the NFL schedule was released last night. All of that different stuff uh, happened, and and here are you know a couple of the highlights. Here we get Brady Breeze right off the jump first Sunday. You got Brady going to New Orleans, which by the way, interesting stat I saw today by our buddies over at uh, I think it was Vegas Insider or somebody I don't know who it was. Uh, Tom Brady has not been an underdog in a regular season game in the last seventy four games that is absurd it goes all the way back to 2015 in week two he was a one-point underdog at Buffalo that's crazy I mean that is just it, you'll never see a streak like that again and by the way the second longest streak of somebody that hasn't been an underdog in forever actually goes the guy that's going against him Drew, Drew Brees. Brees yeah yeah I would, I would have guessed it was Drew nine straight that's it that is such an absurd thing to have in the NFL. Like, I, I don't think we'll ever see it again. We'll never see that's it again. A, that's a hell of a streak, man. Oh, that's yeah. a hell of a streak. Um, there is a game on a Friday this year. Uh, it'll be the first time in 11 years, and that game is late in the season. It is a Christmas Day game. Uh, that afternoon, you've got the Vikings going to the Saints, and you know something crazy is going to happen that day because something always does with the Vikings and the Saints. Uh, Thanksgiving Day, chock full of rivalry games. The Cowboys are the regular season opener of the Rams' new SoFi Stadium. And you're probably not going to get to have fans, but you are going to have a ton of people watching. So, I mean, anytime so you got the Cowboys I have, involved. I have, a, I have a question about this. The Chargers remarkably got a ton of uh, the primetime Chargers, games. No, the Chargers didn't get any primetime games. They, they, yes. got, they got one. But no, they, You're not counting any Thursday night games. Uh, no, I'm counting Thursday night. They, they didn't, uh, they've only got one Thursday night game. Telling you, I literally listened to something, and they were talking about how the Chargers got like three or four primetime. Let games. me let me pull them up. Let me pull them up because there was I, there was a whole article about how the Rams got a ton, but the Chargers were not getting shown a whole lot. 
Well, nor see. should they, by the way. The Chargers don't need to. So I'm not defending that, that they should. My argument was the, they were stating the reason they had the Rams and the Chargers so often on prime time was because of the new stadium. I think that's got to be the dumbest reason to watch a football game. Nobody is watching a game because of the stadium. That's why you go to games, but the television viewing from, you know, Soldier Field or Jerry World ain't any different. The eight, none of the primetime games that the Chargers are in uh, are at SoFi Stadium. They're all on the road. That's, I think They're that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but hang on. But how many do they have more primetime games in? They've got uh, at the, let's see, at the Raiders on December 17th. That's a Thursday night. Uh, they've got a Monday night game at New Orleans. And that's it from what I can tell. Okay, so they got two. All right. I knew they had at least two. I knew they had more than one. Yeah, they got but, two at the Raiders right. and and at the uh, at the. But Saints. like, and then the Raiders got a few, and it's all the same argument as, oh, we're going to show off this new palace that these guys are building, these new stadiums, and my thought process is is that Who that's cares? great for a little bit. Like, it's okay to do that once or twice. You can't have extra games just to show off a stadium because at some point in time, the lights might look a little different, but we're all looking at the same hundred yard field. Hundred percent. I mean, like it's, it's, yeah. This is not, you know, th- this is the television viewing, per, you know, spectacle is no different because the stadium is awesome or shitty. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I I, I think that was insane. How many primetime games are going to mediocre teams? The uh, the Patriots got you know the max five primetime games. Yeah, but. Four of them are in the back half of the season where they can be flexed out. Yes. So that is interesting because it's it's basically giving the networks, hey, this is what we're thinking right now, but if Stidham flops, then we can back out of this. So yeah. they believe on the front end that the Pats are still going to be good. But it gives them the out. So, you know, I mean, there there is that. Uh, the 10... Biggest intriguing games of the 2020 NFL regular season per the USA Today. Uh, first one, you got Chiefs at the Ravens in week three. Obviously, you know, you got Patrick Mahomes against uh, the MVP from last year, Lamar Jackson. That should be an incredible game. Number two, you got the Bucks and the Saints in week one. Obviously, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, both going to be Hall of Famers. Uh, game number three, they had the Cardinals and the 49ers in week one. Um I don't know. They said the rebuilding Cardinals made the eventual NFC champion 49ers sweat in both of their meetings last year. Uh, with a year of experience under Kyler Murray's belt in an aggressive offseason, Arizona should be even more thoroughly equipped to challenge NFC West rival San Francisco. Do you buy I that? I think they're a year behind. They're a year early. I, I just I, – that didn't seem like a very intriguing matchup to me. Yeah, I, I, I disagree. I just, yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. Just because games were close last year. And then also, like – the strength of schedule is always based on last year's uh, records. And every year you can take that strength of schedule and throw it in the garbage. Yeah, because it's going to be completely different this year. I mean, it's just yeah. just always yeah, like the Patriots have the hardest strength of schedule in the league. I, I don't I just don't buy that. Hey, I just uh, don't. Discussing the Chargers, Matt said the Chargers can't even get people to come see them at their home games. Yeah, 100%. Like, there's, there's people that will watch, but they'll watch because it's NFL. That's it. That's the only reason. Um, you've got the Patriots and the Chiefs in week four. Okay. Like, I, I, I guess to see where the Pats are. Like, I guess that'd be the biggest thing. I mean, we know it, the Chiefs are must-see TV all the time. Uh, Kuko Games on Twitch jumps in. He said, hey, uh, what is going on? How you doing? Uh, Titans at the Ravens. That's number five. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you want to see the rematch of, uh, of what was the biggest upset in the playoffs last year. Um, the Patriots at the Rams in week 14. Okay. That's like, a Super Bowl rematch. Yeah. Yeah, from a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, the Rams weren't that great last year. I don't know that they're going to be great this year. Um, but there is, there's always the possibility, right? And and that's two, you know, interesting names, big cities, all that kind of stuff. We'll see. Uh, and a good coaching matchup, if nothing else. Uh, 49ers at the Cowboys. I think that could be interesting. That could be a really intriguing game. Yeah, that'll be a great game. Uh, Steelers and Browns in Week 6 and Week 17. Yeah, I could see that too. Um, That's going to be a shit game. Both of those are. It, you 
You're probably right. You're probably right. McGinnon said, hell, most of the NFC South has a tougher-looking schedule than the Pats this year. Yeah. I I don't know, man. The Pats' schedule looked pretty tough. Ah, uh, okay. We disagree. That's it. You, you didn't think so, huh? No. Uh, next up, you've got the Packers and the 49ers in Week 9. That's a rematch. It's at Lambeau this year. You know, whatever. Uh, Dolphins-Patriots. Yeah, that could be interesting. Uh, you've got it in Week 1. And you've got week 15. And the Pats could see two different quarterbacks in that situation. Um, let's see. Ben said, how about the Burrow and Tua rematch? That'll be the game. That's that's going to be one of the best games to watch. Or, and that's, uh, it depends on if Tua is playing, right? I mean, it, it depends on if Tua is actually playing by that point. They think Tua will be playing by then. What's that, week four, week five? Uh, week five, I believe. Yeah. Let's see. Dolphins schedule. Pull that crap up. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's week five, maybe. Let's see. Week. No, no, it's even later in the season. Um, I thought it was the first, like, half. It is December 6th. So, Oh, yes. shit. Yeah, then the really good chance you get Tua. Yeah, really good chance you get Tua at that point. Yeah. Um, that's gra- that's going to be a great game. That's, that's going to be an ex- interesting game. Yes, I do agree. Neither one that. of those teams are ready to make that next step, but you get to see these two quarterbacks on kind of even playing field. They don't have great skill players. They don't have great offensive linemen. They really don't have great defensive players. So it's just kind of them and rebuilding. Now, you got that right. Uh, who? So USA Today goes through who the winners and the losers were. Uh, the winners, they've, they've got Brady and Breeze, like this new rivalry that's brewing between the Hall of Fame quarterbacks. I, I think, you know, both of them could be winners in this, uh, in this schedule. Uh, did you say or did you see that Tampa Bay does not have to play in the elements at all in the last seven weeks of the season? Like they've got home games and dome games for the last seven weeks. Well, okay, home games are outside; they don't play in a dome, right? But they, they don't have to play any cold weather games. Okay, at all. Well, that's pretty normal for for Miami, and and I mean, it just happens if you play your northern divisional teams or northern opponents early in the year, then that means, at you know, on the road, then that means when it gets cold outside, it just happens. Yeah, Miami's it happens. Yeah. had that happen several times. Jacksonville's had that happen several times. But but just because you're not playing in the cold doesn't mean you're not playing in the elements because they get a shitload of rain and storms. That's true. That's true. Tampa does get quite a bit so you're, of that. I mean, you're talking about two totally different things. Just because we're not playing in, in the frozen tundra, doesn't doesn't mean anything. I, I think it does help out with uh, with an older quarterback. Uh, I think it helps. Tom is used to playing in the. What I know are you he is, about? I, but but you you're telling me it's not he just a little spent bit easier. Twenty years playing in Boston. You, that's what I'm saying. You don't think it'll be a little bit easier to play when it's no. 65 degrees in December? I don't think it's going to be any at all change. Zero change. Yeah, I mean, okay. You guys done okay. something for 20 years. You think you think all of a sudden now it would hurt him if he had to play in the cold? That's no. I mean, you, you're probably right. Uh, Matt said, "Old people from New England always move down to Florida." Yeah. Now, if it was <laughs> Drew Brees having to do that, yeah, because he's never done it. Yeah. Now you're right. You're right. Uh, apparently, Mike McCarthy got a uh, got a pretty good draw here. Uh, he got a soft reentry into the league after his 2019 sabbatical. America's team opponents have a combined .459 winning percentage based on last year's records which is the easiest outlook for any NFC team, which is exactly what you just talked about. You can throw now, that crap Now, I will tell you this. A lot of his is his division sucks. Oh, yes. I mean, the Giants, the Redskins, and uh, and the Eagles. I mean, the Eagles the were were good. The um, Eagles were the good team, and I don't – but I'm, I'm not buying into that anymore. I'm done. I'm done with wins. Yeah, I, I can understand it. I mean, we'll, we'll see again this year. Like, hey, give him one more season, and then – but he's already got a massive contract. I mean, Jesus. Uh, McKinnon said, could be entirely wrong on that, but if the AFC East isn't looking great, then that's half of the Pats' games that aren't great opponents. Uh, now, the, the I think the Bills are going to be very good. The Bills are going to be very good. I yeah. think the other two teams just aren't there yet. No. And at the end of the day, even the Bills are bringing in a quarterback that doesn't scare me against Bill Belichick. Tyrone Davis jumps in on Facebook. First-time commenter, it looks like. Uh, he's just trying to start a fight with you. He said, Patriots suck. So- sure. <laughs> People That's come right. in here trying to start fights, man. I swear. No, he can do that. That's fine. I, can I have some logic and reasoning behind it, or is this just butt hurt? Now this is this is just somebody that don't like the fats. I would I'd okay be willing to vet. 
I'm all right with that. Um, the Bucks and the Ravens each have stretches with three primetime dates in a row. Tampa Bay's five night games will occur in a seven-week stretch, while four of Baltimore's five primetime outings will be in a six-week span. Uh, also playing the maximum of five night games, the 49ers, Chiefs, Cowboys, Packers, Patriots, and the Rams. I could All of that makes sense. Right? I, I, listen, the Patriots are going to be an interesting team. All right. Oh, yeah. They, they they won't be the Tom Brady led Patriots, but the reason the first off the the reason the Chiefs Patriots game and the Ravens Patriots game is on national television is because you have Bill Belichick trying to stop two of the best offenses we've seen in the history of the NFL. Yeah. Okay. That if you like football, if you nerd out with football, that's a that's something that you you're gonna want to see. Yeah, All right. I agree. Because you have an elite level defensive minded coach against elite level offensive ability that we've never seen in the league before. That's uh that is true. Uh, so the, that that's that's prime time television. The AFC North, uh, based on 2019 regular seasons, uh, this division projects to have the easiest schedules, ones that include matchups with every AFC South and NFC East team. Well, they're not because you know yeah. what? Because they get the NFC East. Yeah, it's funny how the teams that have the easiest schedule play the NFC East. Hundred percent. Nobody's respecting Washington. I don't think they should. Nobody's respecting the Giants. I don't think they should. And I think the Eagles are going to take a big step backwards. You could be. Uh, you could be entirely right. Uh, the Ravens have the easiest lineup in the league, followed by the Steelers with the Browns owning the fourth easiest. Pretty crazy. Um, now some of that has to do with the fact that they all get to play each other. and They get to play each other. The Ravens are the only team in that division that, that should scare anybody. Yep. The, the Bengals just are way too early to do anything and call me when the Browns actually live up to, to hype. And the Steelers, <laughs> if Ben Roethlisberger can't be healthy, then they are worthless. There we go. Uh, ben jumps in on YouTube, said the Bills always choke. McKinnon said secretly rooting for the Pats this year just because of Stidham. I feel nauseous admitting that, but I got to pull from my Auburn dude. And Come Tyrone on, said, right, Tyrone you know, said he's is... a Cowboys fan, by the way. <laughs> oh, we're going to have fun. Gonna Hopefully have fun he sticks around, around. Tyrone. We're going to have fun. Yeah, we're going to have a good time this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Joe Burrow, the top pick of the 2020 draft. Uh, they He is the presumed starter, of course, now that Andy Dalton has been released. Uh, he's got plenty of dates on the calendar he can circle. Now, listen to this stuff. He could face fellow first-round quarterback Justin Herbert in week one if Herbert wins the job. I don't think he will. But you will. Um, he gets to face off against Tua in Week 13, we believe, uh, when the Bengals travel to Miami. Then there's the Week 2 game in Cleveland where Burrow will make his NFL primetime debut in the Battle of Ohio, um, which, by the way, is the NFL's 100th anniversary game. Like, they celebrated it last season, and then they celebrated it again this season because this is the real 100th anniversary. Yeah. So, is what it is. Um Along with that, Burrow faces the Redskins in Week 11, possibly an opportunity to knock off quarterback Dwayne Haskins, who necessitated his transfer from Ohio State to LSU in 2018. A lot of, lot of circle games there. I think it worked out for him. I think it worked out for him. Oh, 100%. So, I, I will tell you this. Uh, I'll be taking my Browns gear down for the browns Bengal game. Oh, I could, I could believe that. I'll, I'll, I'll be that. riding with Burrow on that one. Uh, bonding time, the 49ers play at New York in Weeks 2 and 3 against the Jets and Giants, respectively. Uh, the Pats play at Los Angeles in Weeks 13 and 14 against the Chargers and Rams. Uh, the second game is a Thursday nighter. So it could be good opportunities for team chemistry, given the likelihood both teams are going to stay rather than fly home amid those back-to-back -back scenarios. Jacksonville. The Jags were set to be the first team to ever have two international games in the same season. And instead, now... All those games are at home. There's no international travel this year. That's right. And because of that, the Jags are going to play a home slate a full eight games in front of their fans for the first time since, do you know when? Ever. 2012. <laughs> I feel like they've been playing in London forever. Oh, so. yeah. They, I mean, they really have. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo gets his first game against the Pats in Foxborough in week yeah. seven. Uh, so he'll, be be he'll be welcomed. Be, that'll be a warm reception for him. Oh, yeah. By the way, he he will he will not be hated, booed, whatever. They'll cheer him at first, and then they'll they'll, and then they'll do what they him. do. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Matt said Jason Garrett will bring his playbook of clapping to the Giants. Yep, hundred percent. Oh my that's gosh, gonna be fun. that's going to be a disaster. 
And Las Vegas, the Raiders will play their first official home game in Sin City on Monday Night Football in Week 2, the silver and black opening Obsidian Allegiant Stadium. GM Mike Mayock referred to it as the Death Star against the Saints. The game will also mark the 50th anniversary of Monday Night Football's 1970 debut. The Raiders will also host three more primetime games, including dates against Mahomes, Chiefs, and Brady's Bucks. So, those were your winners from the draft. I'm not going to get into the losers because who wants to talk about negative stuff? This is a fun time right now. I'm glad that we got the schedule. We uh, we needed that. I I, I think I, the any- winners the winners are the fans. The oh, winners 100%. are people sitting at home that are dying for football. Yes, that's us. And, and and the NFL saying we don't care about this thing, and and they are going forward with football. Yeah. Like we keep saying, well, what if this thing isn't ready? Well, no, man, this schedule starts week one. Yeah, they're gonna play. Week one. Yeah, we're playing week one. I believe that. Oh, I, they I don't believe care it what your governor says. They don't care what the president says. They're going to play. And Tyrone said, I'm glad we got rid of the clapper, by the way. <laughs> uh, listen, the Giants picked up. I don't know what the over-under on the Giants win total is, but I will be taking the under. You add the, the genius of Jason Garrett and Freddie Kitchens to that team on one coaching staff. Oh, that is, that is like time. 20 anchors to your waist and trying to get you to swim. <laughs> He's going to drown. You we, got no a, we got Tia3 on Twitch said, hi. We are, uh, we're welcoming in all kind of new people today. We Come love on. that. Come on it's in. Friday. Let's go, go ahead Let's and hit that follow button. Share the show out. Tell your friends about it. We, uh, we are here Monday through Friday, every day of the week, having a